Coming up, Iowa student action protests delay Iowa Board of Regents meeting. And later, we give you an update on the Iowa caucus results. We got recaps, updates, and even a parade. Stay tuned for more. And later, I'll let you know what to expect this week in weather. All that and more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Siobhan Chahuja. Yesterday, Iowa's Board of Regents meeting was met with protests from Iowa Student Action. Here to tell us more about their efforts is Daily Iowan reporter Katie Ann McCarver in the newsroom. So Katie Ann, what was the Board of Regents' main goal of their recent meeting? All right, so there are a variety of things um, discussed at yesterday's Regents meetings. Among the no most notable was the announcement that the investigation into alleged physical harassment um, against Hawkeye Marching Band members at the Cy Hawk game has closed and institutional heads are working together um, to make games safer and to avoid um, similar, similar incidents in the future. And there was also discussion about um, seven University of Iowa students who recently returned from China who are being monitored by UIHC in case of coronavirus. Can you tell us what exactly was Iowa Student Actions protesting? Right, so students from Regent institutions who comprise Iowa Student Action interrupted the meeting in Urbandale yesterday um, to demand a tuition freeze. Uh, many of their claims included that the uh, recent multi-year tuition model implemented by the Regents um, is hurtful to minority students. And they also talked about how increasing costs um, are unfair towards underrepresented or low-income groups on campus. Thank you, Katie Ann. As of Wednesday night, 86% of Monday's Iowa caucus results are in, with Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders in the lead with 11 delegates each. Buttigieg is in front with 26.7% of state delegates, and Bernie is close behind them with 25.4%. Warren, Biden, and Klobuchar follow them with 18, 15, and 12% respectively. The results of the Democratic caucus are still not fully released due to technical difficulties with the new app that the party was using to report results. As a result, over six over 1,600 precincts were not able to report their final results. Many precinct captains attempted to call the Democratic Party headquarters, which caused the phone lines to become backed up. It is still unknown when the final results from the caucus will be released. It will also be unknown when weather is going to get, uh, weather is going to get warmer and we'll be able to live normally again. More, with more on weather, it's Grace. Thanks, Shivanj. It's looking pretty chilly right now, but... Excuse me. Um, fortunately, things will start to warm up later this week. Right now it's 19 degrees and sunny, and later this evening it will remain sunny and rise to 28 degrees. Friday will be cloudy with a high of 23 and a low of 16, while Saturday will be a partly cloudy with a high of 31 and a low of 22. On Sunday there will be snow showers throughout the day with a high of 40 and a low of 18, and finally on Monday there will be a high of 36 and a low of 24. The weather's not looking great this week, but I heard the groundhog predicted an early spring, so I'm hoping for some warmer days next week. Thanks, Grace. Five months of investigations and hearing about the president finally came to an end yesterday. The Senate cast their votes and the results are in. President Donald Trump will remain in office. This was the third impeachment on a president in U.S. history and also the third acquittal. Trump has been acquitted of two articles of impeachment, abuse of power and obstruction of justice. The Senate has voted 52 to 48 on the first article and 53 to 47 on obstruction of, con of Congress, remaining consistent with party lines. However, two-thirds of the Senate's votes are needed for removal. Senator Mitt Romney of Utah was the only Republican to vote against his party on the second article. Sometime today, President Trump will make a statement on his acquittal. Let's throw it over to Zach with sports. Thanks, Savanch. Yeah, the number 17 Hawkeye men's basketball team is currently on a hot streak, winning 10 of their last 13 games and were in West Lafayette last night to take on Purdue. Road games in the Big Ten have been excruciating for the visiting team, and this game proved that it wasn't any different. Purdue was shooting lights out from the very beginning, and, well, Iowa didn't really stand a chance. Purdue won this one 104-68. to Despite the loss, Luca Garza managed to score 26 points on 17 shots. The Hawkeyes are going to have to bounce back against Nebraska on Saturday in front of a sold-out crowd. 
Now, earlier this week, the Big Ten started talking about a rule change that would make transferring a whole lot different for student athletes. With more on the rule, we had DITV Sports Director Kate Operton live in the newsroom. So, Kate, what exactly is this rule going to implement? So, yeah, Zach, they're looking to change the rule around where student athletes in the five sports, football, men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball, and ice hockey, right now, athletes in those sports, when they transfer as an undergraduate, they have to sit out an entire year before they can play again unless they get a waiver cleared by their team. And right now, those waivers are kind of just being tossed around like everyone can get them. Over 50% of athletes are being able to sign this waiver when, the, when there should be harsher limits and stricter limits on who can get this waiver. So right now, a lot of these Big Ten coaches and athletic directors want to just make it fair for all of the student athletes in any sport. Rules for the entire Big Ten, but how is this going to affect the University of Athletics specifically? Well, this rule isn't finalized yet. It's just in the early stages of being talked about. So in the immediate future, nothing's going to change for these student athletes. But if this rule does end, end up getting through, we're going to see a lot, of, a lot more transfers out of the football team, like in the positions at quarterback where there's a lot of depth and a, at running back where there's a lot of depth. If there's not going to be that penalty to transfer, you're going to see a lot of student athletes transferring a lot more often to try to get more playing time. And I don't know if it's going to affect Iowa positively. It's tough to tell right now. Um, a lot of players might want to transfer to teams like Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, just the bigger name schools. But you re we really don't know until the rule gets going. Yeah, that's right, Kate. It's not final yet, but when this rule changes gets finalized, it's going to have major impacts on not only the Big Ten, but the NCAA altogether. There have been a lot of talk about IR wrestling after this big weekend, but there's only one Hawkeye who was named USA Wrestler of the Week. Last Friday, Michael Kemmerer had a huge upset over number one ranked Mark Hall. Then on Sunday, he defeated the number 23rd ranked wrestler in the nation. With Big Two wins becomes Big Two awards. After winning Big Ten Wrestler of the Week on Tuesday, Kemmerer was named USA Wrestler of the Week. This award is given to the best wrestler from the youth level all the way up to the senior level. This, these big awards have to have Kemmerer and the rest of the team feeling good, but we will have to see what they can do during the postseason. And to finish up today, I had the blessing to go down to Kansas City and witness the Chiefs parade where they bought, brought home the Vince Lombardi trophy. This was the first time the trophy had been back to the city in for over 50 years. The historic franchise has been a contender for the trophy the last couple of years. But head coach Andy Reid finally got his Super Bowl trophy after 20 years of being an NFL head coach. The whole city was electric, but they're hoping that this isn't the, just the beginning. Witness the, witnessing the parade in the video before, it just makes a person realize how much a championship can bring a city together. That is it for me today, but come back tomorrow to get an update on the dominant women's basketball team. Shavanch, back to you. There are three things in this world that most people enjoy. Dogs, money, and beer. But what would, what would you do if you could put those things together? Well, if that excites you, we've got some good news. Coors Light wants to pay you $100 to adopt a dog. The beer brand is willing to pay $100 towards adoption fees for 1,000 eligible dogs between February 4th and February 21st. To be eligible, you must be of legal drinking age and text your adoption receipt to the beer company. That's all we have for you on this Thursday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV News, I'm Shivan Jahuja. Have a great day, Iowa City.